low profile tires on MG ZST and a lot of other cars at least in Australia these days are they a good thing and what kind of trouble can you expect from it especially if you are not a particularly careful cautious driver well we just had an experience with our MG ZST the one that I'm sitting in right now and that's what I want to talk to you about as we drive around and do it in a bit more dynamic kind of way let's talk about it Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dimitri and this is MG Owners Australia. It is a sunny day for a change and we are not driving at night. I know a lot of you like that video. Thank you very much for your support. Today we are just fixing a tire. That's what this was about and I thought what better opportunity to talk to you my friends when I'm again have a bit of free time on my hands and I'm on the road on the weekend and the experience is very fresh so I'd like to talk to people who are MG owners, who are not MG owners, who are considering to buy a new car. And specifically, let's talk about the experience with um, MG ZST tires and their low profile tires. What does it mean? It means that the amount of rubber, I suppose, the black part on the wheel is not particularly significant. It's not providing that much of a padding from either the side or from the bottom. It is low profile. That's what, that's what it is about. And I know that there are sports performance low profiles, we're not talking about those. They are extremities, so to speak. They would be even lower profile. So in this case, still, let's say it's a low profile, kind of st standard tubeless tire, the one that you get, at least in Australia. In the good old days when I was uh, young and had hair, um, and maybe some of you still remember those good old days as well, wherever you are, we had tires with a tube inside. What it means is the fact that if there is a puncture, then there was a way to take out the to take off i suppose with with significant effort to take off the outer shell of it the rubber and there was a tube inside so the tube could have been fixed and put into into the tire and as long as there is no massive amount of damage done to the rubber so to speak to the to the outer shell then you can just replace the tube and have sort of quite a bit of damage still on the outside of the of the tire but it was still perfectly usable it's not like it was falling apart it was fine right i do not know it's probably from manufacturing perspective like what's cheaper to do for the companies and whatnot i think that would be the main reason why the industry have moved on from tube based tires to the tubeless tires but that is please take it as just a common sense of a middle-aged man and a driver. I, I am not a specialist, I have no idea. I can't wait to hear from my people who are a lot closer to the auto industry and are, you know, automobile experts uh, more than me and who might be able to tell me and others in the comments down below this video what was the actual reason why the industry now is not doing tube-based tires. Sorry for this deviation, but it matters. What matters is the fact that in the, in the last couple of years, this is the second time my wife's car is uh, unfortunately in a situation where we have to change the whole tire simply because the damage is done not to the bottom of it, not to the bottom of it, right? But to the side of it. So it turns out, in case you have not yet experienced any of that, and again, that's not MG related purely. It's related to anyone in the modern car with a low profile tubeless tire. In case you do not know, uh, the different uh, tire repair shops, such as um, Tire Power, such as Bob Jane and T-Mart, other kind of places in Australia at the very least, in Sydney region where I am, they advise customers that they can patch up or repair a tubeless tire by putting a patch essentially if the damage that's done to the tire is on the bottom of it, it's on the bottom of it, as the tire kind of goes like that, right? So if the damage is on the side of the tire, then they cannot, they will not even try, they will not do anything about it, and they will simply tell you, you need a new tire, that's it, that's it. Cutting corners, and what, it, what I mean by that, you kind of have to see it, and it's hard to explain. Essentially, it is when you are not allowing enough of a curve for the car to curve around the corner and you kind of veer very, very uh, 
rapidly and very, very kind of harshly left or right or whatever, and you like, you kind of turn as if you're thinking that you're a tank while you are not. What that leads to is that majority of cars would absolutely uh, expose the rear wheels, the rear tires to some form of bump. It can be a bump against a protruding obstacle that protrudes upwards, such as curb stones, such as elevated roundabouts, such as, um, well, curb stones and roundabouts probably mostly, but if there is any debris on the side of the road, if there is a building site, if there is something like that and they didn't clean up particularly the side of the road, and you are either parking next to it or you're turning next to it. But people who drive like that, that's just a manner of driving. That's something that you need to, spoiler alert, unlearn, especially if you're using low profile tubeless tires. Uh, where you, you cut the corner within millimeters of the, of the edge. What that leads to is that the, regardless of you being generally a good driver, she's generally a good driver, right? Uh, but she kind of exposes herself to the possibility of scraping, of scraping the side of the tire next to that curbstone, next to that debris, next to that whatever. Well, you, you know where I'm going with this. Basically, it's the second time that it happened. Jeep has much bigger tires and it happened exactly the same way. A bit of a harsh left turn or right turn and you scrape the si side of the tire. You scrape the side of this tire. That's how the side damage gets done. And as soon as you do it, you damage the rim. You damage the actual alloy metal centerpiece of, the, of your wheel as well as you do some damage to the rubber itself. I am just trying to raise awareness, for the lack of a better word, um, and say to you, don't drive like that. Be conscious. Remember my story. Remember my wife's experience when next time you look at a corner and you need to turn it and you're trying to be Michael Schumacher, in case you know who that is. He at least used to be a champion of Formula One and, you know, known for his sharp corners there was some damage done that allowed for air to start seeping out and the pressure the tire pressure that zst actually very very nicely tells you about it uses some weird system of those bars it says how much of a bar is remaining but even if you look at it from the perspective of comparing this bar measurement to the other wheels uh, the, the pressure that's shown on the other wheels of the car and the other tires you can see that this one is definitely not okay right well I had to drive to Bob Jane T Mart, very lovely people here in Gladesville, close to us where we live. And they said, look, first of all, first of all, what you need to understand is that the exact tire, the exact model of the tire, yeah, Michelin model of the tire that is fitted on 2021 MG ZSTs has been discontinued. This has been discontinued, okay? It means that they would either need to order one in from some stock somewhere, and this will be several days, if you really insist on perfect consistency and perfect alignment of all of the wheels, and like that it looks like it's the same old package as it, as it came in. Or you would need to do what I just did, and you would need to accept their suggestion and basically go for an upgraded version, which I got in this particular case. Apparently it's a better version, but it's still not the same. It's not the same. It's same size, but it's a sport profile. It's a, it's a slightly different thread. It's a slightly different whatever. So some people who are car experts would say that that's horribly not recommended simply because even if the tires are a little different from each other, that means that the wear and uh, impact on the, on the suspension and other kind of things is not optimal essentially yeah and i'm being i'm being kind of not very specific here because i don't know exactly what it damages all i know is that it's not recommended but my friends to replace one of these tires like i just did to get a new one you need to pay 250 australian dollars 250 that's I suppose not a massive amount of money if you think about it, if you have like some larger rims that are like, I don't know, 20 inch, 22 inch, but we're not comparing it to that. It's a modest, cheap car, let's say, 17 inch alloy wheels with, with respective tires. 250 bucks for a mistake like that is my point.
My point is that the mistake that led to this damage could have been avoided very, very easily, very, very nicely. And it's fine, it's life, it's, it's all good, right? As far as, <laughs> as far as my wife is concerned. But if I can, A, entertain you with a little story this nice sunny weekend morning here in Sydney, Australia, and prevent some of this frustration, prevent some of this damage that you might do to your own car, especially if it's a new car. Imagine heartbreak. Imagine, imagine how bad you'd feel, man, or lady. <clears throat> you don't want to feel bad, and I don't want you to feel bad, essentially. So that is my story for you this morning, my friends. And um, please let me know in the comments down below if you have learned something. I know that this is not a sacred knowledge of sorts, and plus I'm not an expert in, in explaining this kind of stuff. But a lot of you, my supporters, you have been very kind to me over the months of this channel's existence, and you say, you know what, we just like how you explain stuff or whatnot, or that's basically what the messages meant to me. And I really appreciate it. And if you like these kind of little insights that, are don't, that don't have to be groundbreaking, because not, uh, like when you ask yourselves, oh, I wish we saw more videos from Dimitri, there is not all that much happening with the car ownership, right? And I'm not, not a car dealer, I'm not a... I'm not a professional reviewer who is invited into different salons to inspect their cars and review the cars. So you have to understand that in order to bring this content to you, first of all, I want to keep it this uh, kind of accessible, like really just a normal BAU owner insights. And secondly, it will have to be these kind of things that are not necessarily massive. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please develop this habit. If you want to help me out a little bit, just hit that like button. That's all I ask. It tells me that I'm doing something right. It tells me that you have enjoyed it. It's important to me. As well as shows the video to more people. That's how YouTube algorithm works, in case you didn't know. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be speaking with you about something else, either MG or LDV D90 related very soon. Bye for now.